Welcome. This is 49F4 and we're going to talk about the net electric flux through various Gaussian surfaces. And so let's look at three examples. In this first example, I have three positive charges placed in space. There's other charges long, long way away. I'm just focusing on these three positive charges and I chose to draw a Gaussian surface which is a complicated Gaussian surface I'm just I'm just drawing an arbitrary Gaussian surface it's uh, three-dimensional and because these are positive charges the electric flux lines I'm drawn uh, one two three four five I've drawn six of them the electric flux lines are pointing away from the positive charges and so my question is, well, what's the net flux through this Gaussian surface? And what I say is that the net flux through uh, the Gaussian surface uh, that surrounds this point charge, Q, there's three little positive charges. Well, it's going to be, let's take Gauss's law. The flux is equal to the integral of E dot dA which equals Q inside over epsilon naught and the Q inside is however much charge we have inside the Gaussian surface and there's three positives in this case so we put three over epsilon naught and the units well the units are going to be Newtons per Coulomb because of the E and meters squared because of the dA so it's 3 over epsilon naught newton meter squared per coulomb. In this second example, I have the same three positive charges and the same flux lines. Sorry, the ele same electric field lines. And in this case, I have the Gaussian surface has been moved to the side. So I just move things relative to each other. And now I say that the flux, the flux of field lines through my Gaussian surface, well, my flux is going to be the surface integral of E dotted with dA, which equals the Q inside over epsilon naught. And I look inside my Gaussian surface and I see no charges, no, no positives, no negatives, no charges inside the Gaussian surface and so the answer is no zero Newton meter squared per coulomb now do you notice something this electric field line enters the Gaussian surface at this point I'm, I'm talking about there it enters the Gaussian surface there and so thinking back about my sign conventions that's going to be a negative flux and the same electric field line leaves the Gaussian surface there and so that's going to be a positive flux and they cancel each other out so if there's no charge inside the Gaussian surface then or no net charge no overall charge then there's no uh, um, uh, net arrows leaving or entering and so the uh, the Gauss the, the flux is zero and so just a couple of examples at the end. If I take my Gaussian surface 1, which is this guy, I have Q1 inside my first Gaussian surface. So the flux through the first Gaussian surface will be Q1 over epsilon naught Newton meter squared per coulomb. And if I look at my second diagram, I see that I have Q2 and Q3 inside. So my flux would be q2 added to q3 over epsilon naught newton meter squared per coulomb and in this third example there's nothing inside there's no net charge so flux through the gaussian surface is zero because there's no charge inside you can get zero flux if you have no charge inside you could also get it actually if you had a positive and a negative balancing each other it's the net charge that it, it tells you about, the net charge inside. So let's look at this. 
a two coulomb positive charge sits at the center of a spherical surface so here's my two positive and it's at the center of a spherical surface of radius eight meters so let's draw this as eight meters what's the electric flux through the surface well let's have a look I know that my flux is equal to the integral of E dotted with dA and that equals the Q inside the Gaussian surface over epsilon naught and I want to know about the flux and I know about the charge inside so it seems sensible to say that my flux is equal to plus 2 over epsilon naught and what would the units be the units would be Newton per coulomb meter squared and so if I look at these answers at the side it's actually the first one although there should have been units attached to this let's look at the second one a 5 coulomb negative charge sits at point O IJK so let's just visualize so I have my X my Y and my Z comes out towards you it's different from some of the math teachers and 2I is 2 units in that direction along the I and 2J is 2 units up so there's the back wall and then 2k is two units coming towards you and so I can imagine a, a cube like this and my charge is there and it says uh, a cubic Gaussian surface is four meters on edge with one corner at the origin and the opposite corner at plus four plus four plus four so now there's the origin and then I go plus four plus four so there's the back wall and then plus four so there's the front of this cube and I hope you can see that in the scheme of things the green cube the Gaussian surface uh, is surrounding this charge the charge is inside the Gaussian surface and so again I say oh well my flux is equal to my integral of E dotted with dA which equals my charge inside over my epsilon naught and yes it is inside so my flux is equal to and this was a 5 coulomb negative so that will be minus 5 over epsilon naught newtons per coulomb meter squared and there's my answer so if they're straightforward yes I can throw a curveball at you I can give you a distance that you don't need to use <laughs> because the words tell you that the charge is inside and I can give you the position of the charge and the geometry of the Gaussian surface using things like IJK notation but in essence the question is is the charge inside or is it outside and if it's inside you count it and divide it by epsilon naught to get the number of flux lines and if it's outside there's no charge inside the Gaussian surface and so you ignore it there we have it